Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how you can update Docker containers on a Synology NAS. So this is a follow-up to my last video where we took a look at everything in regards to the Docker implementation on a Synology NAS. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a pop-up for that now, but today we're just going to look at how you can update these containers. So real quick before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything we're going over today in the description of the video. So there are a few different ways of updating a Docker container on a Synology NAS, but today we're going to go over my recommended approach. So this is what I normally do, and I do it this way because it pretty much gives me a full rollback plan in case the new container has any issues. And unfortunately, that happens a little more frequently than I'd like. So it's important to quickly understand how these Docker containers work. So Docker containers traditionally aren't meant to be updated. They're meant to be replaced. So when you update a Docker container, what you're really doing is you're replacing that Docker container with the new version that you're trying to install. So with that in mind, what I normally do is I open up the registry and I search for the container that I want to update and I double click it. In the background, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to download the newest version of that container. From there, I'll stop the old container, I'll edit it, and then I'll rename it. And I normally just add dash backup to the end of it, and I keep this for a few days, but I'll show you why in a little bit. After the container stopped, you can click settings and duplicate settings. You're then gonna have to give it a new name, and I normally use the one that I've always used because I just renamed the old one to be dash backup. After that, you'll see that a new container was created, it's still mapped all of our settings, so all of your volumes mapped, all your port settings, everything that you had in that old Docker container now exists on the new Docker container. You're just using the updated version. So I started doing it this way after I ran into a Pi-hole issue a few months ago, actually. Basically, I couldn't get to the admin portal of Pi-hole, and it ended up being something with that specific version. So what I had to do is I had to go through and recreate the container using an older version. So this avoids that because you can keep the new container running. If everything works as expected, you can go in a few days later and you can delete the backup version that you have. And if it doesn't work for some reason, you can go through, delete the newest version that you just created, and then roll back to the last one. You could rename the dash backup to just be the regular container name, and everything will go back to the way it was. So that's how you update a Docker container if you're using Synology's GUI. Now, in the last tutorial I created on Docker, I showed you that you can use Docker Compose as well. Now, Docker Compose is slightly different because everything exists in that configuration file. And for that reason, it's not as easy to just create a backup without going through, copying the full folder structure with all of your volume information, navigating to it because it's now a different path, and then bringing up that new container. You can do that. Basically, you're following the exact same instructions I created in the last tutorial, but you're going through and you're creating it in a new folder location. So this is just my opinion, but since Docker Compose is so easy to work with, if you download the latest version and it causes any issues, it's very easy to go into that configuration file, rename the image to be an older version, and you can get back up in a few minutes. Not to say that Synology's GUI is particularly hard, but you're going through the GUI, you have to map all the volume locations, you have to add all of your environment variables, etc. It's just a little bit more time consuming. So for Docker Compose, I generally just replace the container. So to do that, you you can get a list of the running containers by running the uh, sudo docker container ls command. And after that, you're going to have to stop the existing container. So if you're updating something like Jellyfin, for example, you would have to stop that container because remember, we're replacing it. After that, you have to navigate to the container folder. So basically, you're navigating where that uh, docker compose yml file exists. And that's what it always runs off of. So you have to go back to it, and that's where we're going to replace it. So once you're in that folder location, you can run the sudo docker compose pull command. And this is going to pull the latest image for the container that exists in that folder. You're then going to run the sudo docker compose up command again, and it will create the container using that latest version that you just downloaded. So there's one final thing that I want to mention, and I think it's important to say. So depending on the Docker container that you're using, there are benefits and downsides to updating it. So for example, if you're using a container that you know has a fatal security flaw, obviously you have to update it to the newest version. But if you look at something like Pi-hole or you look at something like Plex, if you're using it in Docker, a lot of the times you're upgrading to versions that might have bugs in them and you're not gonna see any usability difference. So that's not to say you should never update your containers, but that's to say if you're running Plex, for example, or Jellyfin, or even Pi-hole, because like I said, I ran into Pi-hole issues, you run the risk of experiencing issues that you didn't before. 
So that's just something to be conscious of when you're updating. At best, it will introduce a few new features. It might run a little better. At worst, you might experience some issues that you haven't experienced before. So that's why I kind of recommend having that backup container if you're using Synology's GUI. And fortunately, it's easy to roll back to an older version of a container if you're using Docker Compose. So you have that option as well. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.